Okay, uh, so this is the beginning of our identifying unknowns unit. Um, and so I just want to give you a little very brief background on dichotomous keys today. And once you have that background, um, we're going to start using them. And that's why you see all the samples out on all the tables here. And so with keys, both of your textbooks for the course and that optional book on winter ID, they're set up as keys in one way or another. So how many of you are already using taxonomic key in another class? Just a handful of folks. So this will be good practice. So keys are a way to identify an unknown plant. Um, and so you often can't go to an herbarium. It's just not convenient. Uh, you may not have access to the internet out in the field site. If it's remote, you don't have good service. Um, and so you want to be able to use these dichotomous keys. And so this works for, with any type of organism. People use keys for different insects, for different animals, for different plants. So this isn't just for uh, woody species or trees. But all a key is, is a series of statements. And you look at the unknown sample you've got in front of you, you compare it with those statements, and you say, yeah, that's right, no, that's wrong. And it leads you down a series of decisions that eventually gets you to an answer and hopefully provide you with an accurate description of that species. And so there are a few different types of keys. Dichotomous, di means two. And so a dichotomous key is a series of two choices. It's either A or B, A or B, A or B. At the end of each choice, it tells you either what it is or where to go next. So that's why di means two. Multicotomous gets real complicated real fast. So you need usually some sort of computer technology to make these work well. It needs to be a database driven key, uh, but it would be difficult to write one out or have one in a book uh, with a multi-dichotomous key. So here's how this dichotomous key works. You have two choices, one and one. Choice A, choice B. Choice A, that doesn't look like what you have, so you go to choice B, that looks like what you have, and it'll tell you where to go next. It says go to step three. So we skip step two. Step two doesn't matter for this point. That's about other points. We don't care about it. We go to step three, and again, choice E, eh, not quite right. Choice F, that looks like what you have, and eventually it tells you what species you actually have, or imaginary species B in this example. Damn, skipped a bunch here. Okay, here we go. Um, so that was an indented key show you this indented format, see how they're out, then they're in, then they're out. If there was a four, it would be in as well. The indentation is just to help you see what the paired choices are. If they were all out, you might confuse this one and this one as being a pair when they're not. So the indentation is just to make it convenient. If you only have a few taxa, you might have a bracketed key, where here choice one is here and it's at the top as well. So you're choosing between those. If I choose this one, it means I go underneath it, and it's nested immediately underneath there. And you can see this one is for yuccas, and it includes six species. But your textbook, Trees, Shrubs, and Woody Vines of Texas, that includes hundreds of species. So if you tried to set the book up like this, this would be on page one, and this would be on like page 89. And so it would be impossible to functionally use it. So that's why this book is set up as an indented dichotomous key, not a bracketed dichotomous. You can make up different types of multicotomous keys if they help you learn your trees, but we usually don't use this to ID new species. So there's an example of a bunch of conifers split up based on different categorizations. I showed you an example of this in our intro to lab video this semester, where you could see how you could break up the 15 week one species and start being able to tell them apart from one another. So here's another indented key. And sometimes the easiest way to identify a species is just look at it. So what is this? River birch. If you already know it, you don't need a key. Okay. So with all of this, we're trying to gear you up for using this in the real world. So if you look at something in here and you're like, I know what that is, you're done. Just write it down. You know what it is. That's easy. Okay. Um, but if you don't know what this is, is it opposite or alternate? We know all the birches are alternate. You would look at this specimen and see it's alternate. So that takes us to three, we skip two. And then down here, that's clearly not an oval. That's more of a triangle. And the technical term for triangle is deltoids. This is where all those morphological terms become important. And so it tells us we've got Betula nigra, which we all know is river. 
And so we're going to get to constructing keys later. So that's where I want to wrap it up at today. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an exercise. So I have 15 different specimens spread throughout the classroom here. So what you all can do is split up in groups, have one person in your group uh, put together a, a sheet of paper and make sure it includes all your names on it. And then we'll just move these specimens around the classroom, be sure to maintain social distancing. And you guys look at them, don't use the internet, don't use your phones, anything like that. Just use the textbooks that y'all brought today and see if you can use the textbooks to figure out what all of these are. I mean, what's that? I mean, uh, there, there are 15 of them. You probably won't get to all 15, but make sure these little slips of numbered paper stay with them and you'll get bonus points for however many you turn in. Um, and so with this exercise, all of these came from my backyard. So it's a sandy soil here in Nacogdoches County near a creek. That's where they came from. I collected them all last night. Any questions on what we're doing?